Okay. Uh, are there any questions specifically about what we've talked about uh, thus far uh, in regards to the Lord's uh, prayer or what we uh, talked about uh, right before the uh, Lord's prayer, um, Matthew uh, 6, uh, 1 through 8? Okay. Well, uh, going to... Uh, I summarize it as we go into the second part of the uh, the Lord's Prayer, um, what we talked about last Monday. Um, verses uh, one through eight, when uh, Jesus was talking about uh, how uh, the mindset, um, I would say the heart set that we have in terms of giving um, and, and charity and how that is more so of a uh, a inner um, focus, and that is a inner relationship um, that is being um, had and its experience is uh, opening up. It is uh, showing that uh, the reward um, for fostering and building uh, this relationship uh, with the Lord and with our heart in terms of opening it up in terms of how we uh, uh, give and uh, our desire and intent to give, therefore then determines uh, the reward that we seek, that we, excuse me, that we receive. And while that reward is uh, something that seemed to be uh, done uh, inwardly uh, first, and how is not the same reward for those who are doing uh, things for intention. Uh, are there any uh, questions, uh, thoughts, or comments uh, about that before we move forward? It's a very quiet group today, <laughs> this evening. <laughs> is, is everyone with me? Yes. 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 <laughs> Okay, so uh, table. say it again. We waiting to eat at the table. Oh, okay. <laughs> Moving on uh, to, to verse nine, uh, uh, a prayer that to a certain extent, I would say we are all uh, familiar with because all of us have um, a different idea, well, a certain idea of it at least that we were um, mostly uh, raised on. And uh, in it, we talked about at the very beginning, the very, very first uh, word of the prayer is abwum. And uh, to note right before uh, uh, Jesus even got to verse nine, uh, he was talking about uh, the idea of actually using uh, little words uh, when praying because the Lord already knew uh, what you needed even more so uh, the Lord knows what we need even more so than uh, we even know. And in that at womb, uh, we talked about last week how that is the very beginning of a vibration. It's the very beginning of a, a setting, is an attuning. It is uh, one where we are both uh, quieting uh, ourselves. Um, it is the beginning of uh, submitting. Um, we will explain that uh, I'll go a little bit further in detail uh, about that as we uh, move forward. Um, it uh, talks about, or, uh, or more so, we learned how in that sitting, we are making space and we are recognizing the Lord. Uh, we are embracing uh, the Father. We also uh, said is the uh, Cosmic Mother as well. Um, and we're acknowledging, not using words, but more so uh, in awe and in more so in uh, soaking it up. Uh, we use the metaphor in terms of how one might see uh, a, a, a landscape uh, or something like a mountain, beach, uh, et cetera, that one has seen and is in awe and inspired of. You don't try to uh, say that thing uh, or try to explain it in words because it goes beyond words. You more so feel it within your uh, yourself 
and you have a fond appreciation of the uh, majesticness that you are, are looking at. Uh, um, yes. yes, sir. Um, may I uh, add, raise something? Sure. Uh, when when you uh, some triggered when you said that um, when you mentioned the word rather uh, a boom, uh -huh. um, I um, what was triggered is that this could not possibly or should not ever have been I should say translated as father, and the reason I say that is because. Um, if we understand the nature of spirituality, as well as the um, Semitic language structures, then we will, under, we will see more clearly that it's impossible for this to have been referencing a parental gender. And the reason I say that is because I read someplace an in-depth study of uh, the Aramaic or the Hebrew would tell you that Abba speaks more to relationship than it does identifying a gender. It speaks to the depth of a relationship as opposed to the attachment to a, a, a gender. The other thing is it cannot possibly be attached to a feminine or masculine gender. It has to be both because if we look at femininity as being a nurturer, a birther, and we look at masculinity as being a protector and a provider, and we get all of that from that one entity, then the most fitting translation of that word of womb in this regard would probably be my beloved who is in heaven meaning that the one to whom I am attached as in marriage. I don't mean marriage like we see marriage. I mean marriage as in uh, becoming one with it, um, being attached uh, in such a manner that it is impossible for you to tell one from the other or be separated. So if we if we see this uh, through the Semitic eyes, then we are not actually addressing anything or anyone. What we are actually doing is reminding ourselves of the inextricably inextricable relationship that we have with it. And in doing so, we are opening ourselves up. And when that happens, all of the things that are in the subsequent verses take place in that instant. And, and what I'm trying to say, I think, is that when that happens, um, all of the things in an instant began to reveal themselves to us without us having it given the thought to it. Uh, the presence of mind in reference to the kingdom, um, knowing that uh, our desires are for it to be balanced, as, um, be the same, rather, in this earth consciousness as it is in enlightenment. All these things happen in an instant. So I guess what I'm saying is that the, 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 whatever time it takes 
for us to erase from our memory or our thought processes this idea of father, however long it takes, it is imperative we do that. And I will carry the step further by saying this. The reason it is imperative that we erase this is because regardless of what we say subconsciously, when we say that word father, we are uh, engendering the idea of a male or masculinity. If, if indeed we are to begin to think spiritually, then we cannot possibly attribute any human virtue or any human uh, physical physicality to the um, to the spiritual. Why do I say that? Because we know that. When we say father, we're talking about a male, and we know that it is the biological organ that makes the male a male in our mind, and it is the, the feminine organ that makes a female a female in our mind. And those two organs are not attributable to our creator, to our, uh, to a womb. And, and and so what do we see when we see, uh, when we say um, Abu or Abba? We, we have to teach ourselves to see the same thing we see if we were to say those words, my beloved, or the one with whom, I, the one I love or the one with whom I'm in love. It doesn't matter. My beloved, what do you see when you say my beloved? You see absolutely nothing. It it generates a sense of passion, a deep seated feeling, a desire of oneness. Does that make any sense to you guys at all? Yes. Yes. Yes, real. Yes. So, uh, any questions about that? Um, hopefully, we can get a clearer. Um, view of what I'm trying to say so that we can indeed rather than use those words our father we just begin to deal with it as uh, I've um, I'll ask you to uh, to, to, so to help questions or comments go ahead to help, to help it uh, along and we're still uh uh, definitely taking uh, any uh, questions anytime, uh, as always. The 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 and the reason why he has mentioned this in terms of, of father, um, we are recognizing uh, something that goes far beyond just having human traits to begin with. Uh, uh, one, uh, the word father automatically uh, humanizes it. And what uh, also because of that, it uh, dilutes what it is that uh, we're talking about in terms of the creator. And further, what it also does is uh, when he says we can't say uh, a father in our mind, the whole, I don't want to say concept, but what's going on with that a womb when I talk about uh, us grounding ourselves or our um, we're uh, beginning uh, to go in a space where we are beginning to uh, go beyond uh, just the physical. We are expanding ourselves and we are starting off by doing that by acknowledging the creator. And in that acknowledgement of the creator, we're not just thinking about the creator, we're embracing the equator, um, excuse me, the equator, the creator. And we're beginning to actually feel that so it's the same thing we feel when uh, we feel when we are over uh, joy uh, or in a deep uh, a compassion uh, moment, um, even like with the child, et cetera. And you feel uh, that vibration, uh, you feel the energy uh, in your heart, you feel like your heart is uh, bursting. We, this is what is actually taking uh, place. We're going beyond uh, the mind and we're going to the heart. 
And so it's important that uh, the, the, the most important part of this uh, prayer altogether, or the most important part when Jesus is saying, uh, this is how you pray, this is what he is speaking of. Um, uh, any, any questions or comments at this moment? Sheldon, it's Ron. Uh, I, I agree with you. And I, I think uh, it even starts before you utter anything or before any thoughts cross your mind. I mean, that word pray shouldn't probably be used as well uh, because it makes you think of speech or, or uh, forming words or, or thoughts in your mind. And that is talking about, uh, as we've discussed before, but it's talking about creating space. And how do you do that? It is uh, having an expectation. So when you look at this, I'm looking at uh, the word prayer, uh, and it talks about to, to incline or bend towards something, to listen intensely or to, to, to lay a snare for. So here it is, uh, I'm, I'm creating space because I anticipate something happening. I, I've been towards it. In other words, I'm giving all of me to this thing. So uh, this is, you know, even before you get into this, this, this meditation, as, as we, for lack of a better term, uh, kind of takes you there, takes you to the heart or to the soul, uh, to the universe. And uh, it is uh, speaking in a way of uh, total submission, total submission, getting away from self and, and, and seeing what is spiritual. And uh, that, that takes you to a whole different mindset. So I just thought that kind of ties into what you and Pastor just said. Yeah. Yes, Go, and, and as, as you were saying, uh, a, a better word than prayer, and actually, what the uh, uh, the word prayer means in the Aramaic is uh, meditation, uh, which definitely doesn't make you think of words in the same way a uh, prayer does. Uh, thoughts and comments thus far. Before we uh, even go uh, further, and uh, on the heels of what Pastor Richard said in terms of the uh, the Father. Um, I wanted to give uh, several alternatives, not only uh, for you to hear, for everyone to hear, but to meditate on. And what I mean by meditate on, I mean, feel the words that are actually being uh, um, said. Uh, o thou from whom the breath of life comes. All of these are uh, uh, different um, versions of what uh, ab womb uh, represents and, and like we say, this is more of a concept, uh, not just uh, a, a word. This is uh, uh, something a, a lot more. This is uh, kind of like an uh, an idea, but it's more so of a spiritual idea. Um, like I said, it's something that is particip participatory. It's not something uh, that you just say. It is uh, the act of actually uh, doing something. Uh, so once again, O thou from whom the breath of life comes, O birther, father, mother of the cosmos, our father, mother, who art above and within. And then uh, as I said uh, last week, uh, before we go further continuing, O birth of father, mother of the cosmos, you create all that moves in light. This is the, the recognition uh, of that and the embracing. Uh, when uh, don't ask me, I don't I can't remember all the names, but that idea of um, in the scriptures, when they were naming all the names uh, of God, um, this is not just the naming uh, of all those things. This is a recognition of all those things. And as you know, it is uh, unlimited 
in terms of all the names, because all of these are different aspects. Most importantly, it is embracing all of these things. It is an acknowledgement of them. Uh, o thou, the breathing life of all, creator of shimmering sound that touches us, respiration of all worlds, we hear you breathing in and out in silence. Oops, excuse me, I was in the wrong one. Our uh, mother, father, which are in heaven. Uh, hold on. Source of sound in the roar and the whisper, in the breeze and the whirlwind, we hear your name. Radiant one, you shine within us, outside us, even darkness shines when we remember. Name of names, our small identity unravels in you. You give it back as a lesson. Wordless action, silent potency, where ears and eyes awaken, there heaven comes. O birther, father, mother of the cosmos. So, if I were to uh, look at that ninth verse, right, mm -hmm. instead of saying, at this man of death, oh, pray ye, um, if I were to look at that and say, this is the method that I suggest that you use when you quieten yourself, when you open when you focus, when you quiet your thoughts and and open yourself to the rea to the realization that you are one with the source of everything that is. When you do that, the kingdom is present in the earth as it is in heaven. Does that make sense? So if, he, if that is true, and if this is not saying that that the moment you recognize, I'm sorry, the moment that you desire to not desire, that's a bad word that choice of words, um, the moment you say, um, my beloved are one, which is enlightenment, at that moment, something happens. Because the root of Abba is like, is like a branch attached to a tree. So, so it, it's recognizing that attachment, and I'm struggling because I want this to be as simple as possible so that when you sit in your space or wherever you are and you become this empty vessel in order to be filled by the source of everything that is. You don't have to bother with remembering words. You simply sit as an empty vessel desiring to be filled. And in doing so, at that very moment, that you sit as that empty vessel, you become no thing because now you are one with everything. And at that quiet moment, all the principles reveal themselves without you even thinking about them, without you even focusing on them. What your experience is, is what the rest of these words say. 
you you experience forgiveness, you experience um, the kingdom. Uh, you you um, experience the strength to refrain from any temptations that averts your thoughts or eyes from who you are. This prayer is not about, or these words, I should say, are not about teaching someone how to talk to the source. It's about teaching everyone how to make oneself aware of their availability or their oneness with the source. So when Ron Sheldon talk about it's not the it's not about words. The words are contaminating. The words that we search for contaminates this opportunity to come to the realization of our unicity with the source. And maybe recognizing the source is a better way of saying refrain from using gender-based words. Refrain from using uh, words at all. Simply breathe and experience. Breathe and experience. And as we breathe and experience the source, the source reveals to us everything that's needed to sustain this human life, everything that's needed to heal this suffering world. The source becomes us and we become the source when the source reveals to us everything that we are, that this world stands in need of, then we become the source to the world. And I believe that that's the gist of what Jesus is saying. Even if you don't make it in terms of your thoughts or whatever to thine is the kingdom and the power of the glory forever, if you don't even get that, it doesn't matter. Because the moment that you embrace the source, you are also embracing the reality that the source is all-powerful. The source is the kingdom, the principles thereof, as well as the balance and beauty of everything that is. It is in that, it's that type of attitude, I do believe, that Jesus was making every effort to uh, tell the disciples they are, or we are to, um, to have at that moment when we silence our minds and open our hearts. I'm done. Hey, Ray, is this like pouring yourself into him? It's like releasing yourself to be what it, to, to the source. So the source can do what it chooses with it. It's not so much you pouring yourself in him because you're already there. All of us are there, whether we recognize it or embrace it or not. It. And, and when you said, uh, which was a, a poor translation as well, um, after this uh, matter, therefore, pray ye, um, uh, a different translation, a more accurate uh, translation would be, uh, therefore, you are to meditate like this. And in that, uh, as uh, Jesus was actually okay. saying, say it again. I should have said thank you because that's perfect. Yeah. Um, so if you uh, look at it instead of this is how you pray, therefore 
you are to meditate like this. Then the very next word is abwum, but Jesus was not just there saying abwum in terms of this is what you do. Abwum would be them there making a sound which was actually meditating. And uh, that's where that entire transformation was uh, taking place. So as an, uh, an example of that, this is more akin to, and everybody on the line have one. Think of um, the song that means more to you than uh, anything, any other song in the world. And think of how you get totally lost in that uh, song and it goes beyond uh, words and you begin to feel uh, that song and embrace that song and nothing else in the world exists, uh, all time uh, stops, et cetera. This is what uh, uh, Jesus was taking the, the disciples through right then at this particular moment when um, Pastor Richard is talking about there are no words that are uh, being uh, uh, used there is simply a recognition, um, a submission, and in a sense, you're getting uh, lost uh, in this uh, presence uh, that is there uh, at the particular moment, but it's also always accessible, always there. And getting lost and beginning in that meditation, um, uh, drowning yourself in that, that's where everything else uh, follows uh, from that uh, standpoint. But that is the, the transformation that is taking place. It is not your mind. Um, I wanted to mention uh, in uh, verse uh, six, when Jesus says, when you pray, you go in your, um, your uh, secret uh, closet. Um, this is something that is done, it has been uh, said many times, that is done uh, through your heart and you're feeling your heart. Well, uh, it's like uh, your heart is the shrine. And one of the meanings of uh, enter into um, thy closet is heart shrine. And this is what we were talking about. This is all that something that, not something, but this all takes place within. This entire uh, prayer is actually spiritual and beyond of uh, anything physical. Sheldon. Yes, ma'am. What, before you got to the, the closet part of the prayer, oh, it well, sounds like you were described. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I, I apologize. You go ahead. I apologize. Oh, it just, it just sounds like you were describing intimacy, a marriage, a, a intimacy was, was what I was feeling when you were talking about, you know, just what you had said previously. I don't want to mess it up, but. That's what I saw, because when you're intimate with someone, you're one with that person. It's like a marriage, a dance. I mean, it's just that there's a, I, I can't put it in words, but I felt it so strong. I just felt that intimacy. You don't see or hear anything when you're intimate with a person. You're just one with that individual. And I can see it's more powerful when you with. Abwoom. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yes, it, it makes uh, all the sense. Um, yeah, because uh, when you say uh, intimate, we're not even, uh, uh, there's a connotation with intimacy that uh, is just uh, um, sexual and it's not at all. Intimacy, like you said, is the joining of two, but also what is actually taking a place with that becoming two is, I mean, excuse me, that becoming one, forgive me. It is a, uh, a letting go um, in order to become one. So it, it is becoming uh, uh, vulnerable and is also uh, an embracing. And uh, even in that embracing, it is an, uh, it is an appreciation and uh, thankfulness that is taking place all at the same time. There is a recognition um, uh, of the, uh, that thing, uh, the other part, I guess you would say this joint, and I don't want to say other part because parts are actually starting to uh, cease to exist and, and fall away uh, in a sense. But no, it is an extremely uh, uh, intimate thing. 
And it is something, once again, that is not done through uh, the mind. Uh, the mind is unable to get you there. And the reason why your mind is able to uh, get you there is because the mind isn't uh, the deeper aspect of our soul. Our souls are in the source through our, uh, our heart. It is that thing that uh, is um, uh, uh, eternal. And it is that part that joins. It is that part that uh, cannot be described or put in a word. I, uh, I, I agree with that. I think, uh, if, if anybody ever got into that place where not only is this uh, intimate, it, it can be emotional sometimes, it can bring you to tears. Uh, this, that, this place is talking about being one with the Father, being one with the universe. Uh, uh, Pastor N. Sheldon said something. Uh, struggling trying to put it into words. I think the further you get into this or the closer you get to to recognizing and experiencing this, I think it, it does become difficult to put into words. You, 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 you can't uh, really explain where you are, what you feel. So I think intimacy is a, a very appropriate word for, for what you experience when you get to this place within yourself. Well, I've been there. Ron. Go ahead. Sorry. I say I've been I've been there where Ron is just saying you just get you just there and and I didn't want to it's like I didn't want to come back. But I was around my prayer partners at the time I was meditating and my prayer partner actually said come back. You know, she had to tell me to come back because I was there and I just didn't I felt like I was in a world that was just me and 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 the the creator just just us two there by ourselves, and I just didn't want to come back. And it's a reason for all of this as well. Why uh, we cannot describe this in world? Excuse me, in words. And uh, so we are only um, we only can sit here and, and try to uh, get everyone to understand their own personal experience with this because God and what we're actually talking about is love. And I don't care who's on uh, the line right now. No one can describe uh, to me uh, love. There's no way that you can describe love to someone who has never experienced love and they understand exactly what it is that you're talking about. It is something that you have to experience and you only can know through uh, experiencing uh, it. So that 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 is why we're we're trying to uh, uh, connect um, the experiences um, in our past that all of us have had that are actually uh, similar to uh, the letting go and embracing that is uh, taking uh, place. Questions or thoughts, comments. I, uh, well, I was thinking about this after um, the past two uh, days, um, Saturday's uh, lesson, the yesterday's lesson. And um, I don't know if it's connected, but since we got on love, I'm going to mention it uh, here. The other um, uh, great thing um, about love, since we just mentioned love, is that, and, and it, well, it actually is tied in because what we're talking about here is uh, timeless. Love is uh, timeless, and all of us have experienced timeless love, um, but may not have noticed it. And what I mean by we have experienced uh, timeless love is the act of at some point when someone shared uh, love uh, down uh, upon us or with us, etc., and we did not accept it, and we weren't able to accept it for whatever reason um, at that particular moment. But then later on, at some other point uh, in life, we were able to then appreciate that love that that person uh, gave us that we didn't even recognize at that particular moment. 
Does everyone understand what I'm uh, saying? Say that again, Sheldon. All of us have experienced times, and I'm sure we have uh, given love to people in the, uh, in the same way. There are certain situations, and we have extended love to others, and others have, or and or others have extended love to us. And for whatever uh, reason, that uh, person um, who had the opportunity to embrace and uh, take in that love did not take that love in. They completely ignored it or were too, because uh, what we're talking about is uh, actually submitting and becoming vulnerable to accept things. So for whatever reason, that love was not accepted, but love is timeless. And at any point in that life, and all of us have experienced this, we have been able to accept, embrace love that was extended uh, to us at some point previous when we did not, uh, and we did not uh, accept it uh, at that particular moment when it was first extended. That person doesn't have to be present. That person uh, doesn't have to be in our midst. I understand. And I was just in awe of uh, the timelessness of, of love. Thoughts, questions, comments? Okay. The second part uh, of the, just that um, first line, not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going in uh, order. Are we talking about uh, the prayer in whole or not? I know uh, Pastor Richard had talked uh, some more about the um, uh, the prayer. Um, Where well, I um I I I was thinking that. It would probably be easier to talk about it conceptually as a whole, mm-hmm. as a as a po- as opposed to um, um, making uh, attempting to do it verse by verse or line by line because it is in itself uh, one concept mm-hmm. uh, of some of, of um, emotions. Maybe is that a good word for that? Experiences that take place at the moment uh, that we begin to meditate in this manner. Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking that, you know, all of this takes place in an instant. This is what we experience in an instant. And um, if we were to do anything in terms of talking about it in portions, my suggestion would be that um, verse 10, 11, and 12 be taken together, 10 and 11 especially be taken together. Why? And the, uh, Because after you get beyond um, the 12th verse, it begins to talk about you deliver us not to temptation, or forgive, um, not unto evil. And then it talks about uh, the idea of, um, of delivering us from evil. Rather, it, it talks about us and our relationship. But beyond, before that, it talks about uh, the kingdom and the bread being delivered to us daily. So I think this idea of forgive us our debts that we forgive others is the, it's a bridge that connects those two portions, those two parts. Does that make sense? It it does. Uh, one thing I definitely wanted to uh, bring in uh, uh, yesterday when we were talking about um, uh, forgiving, and as we talked about, uh, uh, mentioned that. Forgiving is 
for uh, us as, as well and why that is important. That forgiving that we're talking about is talking about softening uh, the heart. And it is talking about so that the better, how to say this, the better that we do at forgiving, the further that we can actually go into this prayer. Uh, when I say go, no, let me even say prayer. The further that we, it, the more, the deeper that we go into this experience, into uh, this meditation. So when we ask or asking for forgiveness, we are asking for forgiveness for that purpose because we understand that uh, that is one thing that would uh, hinder us and we want to uh, let go. Are there any thoughts or questions about that? It's the thoughts and, uh, and the questions that are driving the conversation. So if anyone has uh, any thoughts, and even if you don't uh, agree um, or uh, think that this uh, may uh, be difficult, et cetera, uh, please speak up. Um, if I may, I, all of these uh, lessons we've had the last few days to me, are being summed up here. Uh, I'm, I'm, you, you just mentioned love. We talked about love and the timelessness of love and, and, and how everything is captivated in, in that. Everything is, is, is there. You know, it's, it's, you, you, you're a part of it. It's a part of you. And, and it's just the, the, the energy, the, 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 the feeling of that. Uh, I'm reminded of all uh, the other day, pastor said something that I had never heard before, and it, it really sunk in, uh, love thy neighbor, including your thoughts. That includes your thoughts. And I'm like, wow. Okay, so, uh, you know, I, I'm looking at this, this meditation because what we've been taught, uh, especially in the Baptist church, I guess I can say, uh, prayer is Lord, help this relationship. Lord, help me pay this light bill. Lord, help me find a job. Uh, those kind of things. So all of these thoughts that you, you reach a point where you just surrender yourself and say, I belong to you. I, I, I can't, I, I don't want to try to fix this anymore. Uh, universe, I submit myself to you. And as you just said, getting into this place, the further you get into it, or the, the, for, the, the more you become one with yourself uh, and, and see that. I see the give us this day our daily wisdom. And because and, I see that as wisdom, bread being wisdom, that, that nourishment. I see all of that taking over and replacing the Ron needs to pay his light bill. The Ron needs this and needs that. So I, as I become one with the universe, the universe becomes one with me. And that whole need changes. That whole uh, that selfishness goes away and Ron becomes uh, what mankind needs. So those human experiences uh, become the, the, the catapult that drive the spirituality in you to be one for mankind, to, to, to stand there and be, I'm not sure how to say this, to, to, to generate that energy and push it towards what is needed for man. So the rest of these things, I don't even think you have to give them thought. I think it happens as it is needed. And, uh, and for each one of us, uh, you know, it, it, it may be varying degrees of differences with each one of these, these verses. So that's, that's how I see it. I, I see it as a, a meditation that happens instantaneously. And from that point on, whatever nourishment or whatever enlightenment is needed uh, as that submission and that oneness takes place, it's done without thought to it.
I hope that made sense. Did it to me. Uh, I guess so. No. no. <laughs> Other questions or comments? Thoughts? Hey, Shelton, this is Charles. Um, when he said, Dark Kingdom come, what is he what 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 is he saying talking about the kingdom? It is a, a a recognition of the kingdom and it's the idea of making the kingdom uh holy. So it's as if you separate all the stuff that we talked about um in terms of the uh to start off in the meditation and the recognition, recognizing the holiness, but that holiness actually takes a place within. So it is uh, opening uh, up that place for that to start from uh, within, as in uh, without, so to begin in the uh, inside of the heart. And then in uh, yeah. doing that is also having a desire um, uh, uh, to embrace that. Um, so the entire uh, time when it is basically saying, um, is asking the creator to have his way with me, so to speak. That is part of the turning. What is actually taking place, that is the expressing the desire. And that's not being said uh, in words. That is uh, a desire within one's heart. I can understand that. But most importantly, you're not, it's just, it's not saying it in words. It's having a, a, a deep yearning for it. And so uh, the stuff that uh, Ron was uh, uh, talking about just now is not being uh, blinded or being concerned uh, about those things. It's, Calvin. Yes. Can you go back to what you were saying about forgiveness? Can you, uh, can you go into that again? Uh, yes, I actually wrote down a few things I wanted. To, I was going to say, with uh, had uh, uh, more thoughts about it. Um, uh, for for those who were not um, uh, uh, with us yesterday, uh, we talked about uh, what could um, be, understandably, absolutely be, uh, things that could be extremely hard uh, to for, um, to forgive uh, another for, and we. Uh, talked about the, uh, the idea that uh, it's, it's kind of hard saying this because not trying to, to, to sound harsher any, uh, in, in any way uh, at all, but it is incumbent upon us, it is uh, up to us to, in, a, in an empowering way, to forgive and it's important to forgive. And it's not just to forgive because the Bible or the church told us uh, to forgive, to turn the other cheek, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's not what it, uh, we're actually, uh, not the only thing that's actually taking place. When we don't forgive, for whatever reason, uh, that person uh, did something that trespassed against us, uh, so to speak, uh, because they were unable to recognize us or see the divinity uh, in us, uh, et cetera. As long as we don't forgive that person, we are then handcuffed to that uh, lower deluded uh, way of seeing us and see, we're seeing ourselves that they actually saw us. What is taking place uh, when uh, we fail to forgive is that we are closing ourselves uh, off. We're closing ourselves off and uh, we have a barrier around us. And that love that I just spoke about uh, a, a little while ago in terms of being timeless, we do not allow that uh, love in. So going back to the very first part and all the things that we've talked about with uh, the prayer uh, thus far, in a sense, we're cutting ourselves off from that. When we forgive, we are letting go, we are moving uh, on, that particular thing that uh, may have taken place no longer has reign in our lives. It doesn't at all um, define who it is that we are. It's as if we have moved um, beyond that thing. Important 
it's always important to uh, put in the conversation when we uh, are talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness does not mean that uh, in certain circumstances that you have to continue dealing with uh, the particular uh, person uh, who is receiving uh, the free, uh, giving. That's not what that means. Forgiving does not, um, is not dictated or determined by any action whatsoever. Forgiveness is based upon whether um, we uh, as individuals have moved on in terms of our heart. Forgiveness is based upon whether or not we still hold a grudge. You can uh, be in the midst of someone every single day of your life, or you can never speak to or see uh, someone ever again in your life. In both of those cases, forgiveness could have taken place. In both of those uh, cases, forgiveness did not necessarily have to take place. So we want to uh, definitely uh, say that forgiveness doesn't mean that you owe someone some particular, uh, some, uh, particular uh, action. Now, going uh, back to uh, the last thing um, that I, I wanted to uh, just, just point out as it relates to forgiveness. Forgiveness allows us to once again, move beyond uh, that for which we were once bind to. And it allows us to, uh, to be open. It allows us to uh, submit in the way that we're talking about in this uh, meditation. there any uh, thoughts or uh, questions? I have one question and it's sort of like a thought. If, if, you, if you don't forgive, like, you, like, the, like, like the words say, you, if you do forgive, it'd be like water flowing. So when you don't forgive, you become stagnating. You can't move until you do what the word says. You understand what I'm saying? It's just like somebody don't dam the creek up the way you can't flow. You is all closed up. Yeah, yes. Uh, but when you do, I go ahead. Yeah, when you do the deal, you open, then the creek is open up again and you're flowing again. Yes, and that's exactly what is happening on a spiritual uh, level because forgiveness, uh, I mean, well, not forgiving does not allow us to uh, experience and in a sense walk in uh, the deeper aspects of ourselves as long as we hold on uh, to that thing. And the reason being is because we cut off certain parts of our uh, self, which uh, takes, uh, uh, actually takes energy, a lot of energy also. So thank you. You're right. So yeah, I, I agree with Charles. So forgiveness, unforgiveness can kind of create a, tra a trap, an entanglement that um, that kind of cuts us off from being able to to breathe essentially. Um, um, but when we forgive, we let go of that and it creates the space in us so that we can breathe, so that we can appreciate the, the hollowness of the creator and experience that too. Yeah. Yes, it, it, it's, a, it's a very, uh, a binding thing. And I, I must say, uh, not only do we have to uh, forgive uh, others, there are certain things that we hold against ourselves in the same way that we need to forgive too, because uh, forgiving is a part of who and what we experience as, uh, ourselves as, which also can be limiting because we are, can hold ourselves in binds. We can see ourselves in a certain light that we have to uh, let go. Or there are certain mistakes that uh, we have, uh, or, or I don't, excuse me, not mistakes that uh, we have made. There are certain things that we have, may have done in the past and we hold ourselves to those things as 
as if those things are our identity and we won't let those things go. So in a sense, we're holding ourselves uh, back uh, in a way as well. So this idea of forgiveness is uh, tied to uh, letting go, uh, letting loose of uh, entanglements. I was looking for that word early. I'm so glad you said it and I couldn't get it. I said something else I can't remember. <laughs> Yeah, that brings me back up. to what we talked about yesterday about molestation and how women hold on to that um, and feel responsible instead of forgiving themselves. Um, so yeah, they get in general they get caught in the in the trap in the entanglement. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting way to look at it. Forgiving yourself is important, I guess. Yes, forgiving yourself is extremely important because yes, what uh, she um, uh, has, has done in that manner is just as that, uh, that person um, failed to recognize the divinity uh, in her um, um, for whatever reason with their own entanglement, without forgiving, she's taken on uh, that uh, in entanglement in terms of seeing that as part of her identity because now she is starting to embrace when she said it's my fault, what she's essentially saying is I deserve that. And so that's when she is buying into that particular uh, thing. So forgiveness is not just only saying I'm not upset with another person anymore. Forgiveness is letting go of uh, an unjust identity of ourselves as well. It, it's also, I think, um, embracing your own divinity. Because mm -hmm. when you, when you, if you, when you blame yourself for that, then you are not embracing your divinity because it's impossible to embrace your divinity and at the same time identify yourself with something so reprehensible. I, um, if I may, I would like to read briefly something, okay? See if it, it makes yeah. sense. When you meditate in this manner, or in this way, you recognize that your unshakable relationship with the source is present with you at that moment. Is that at that moment is your desire um, your I'm sorry, at that moment it is your desire that the character and the will of the source is the same in this earth as it is in heaven. From this comes your daily sustenance and separates us from that which besets us and limits us. You are then beyond temptation and you are ripened because the, the kingdom, the power, and the balance of everything that is, and that includes you. Does that sum it up? Yes. Well, I'm going to let everyone else uh, speak. Thoughts and uh, comments or questions? As many times as we have repeated the Lord's Prayer on our own, it has to be at least a million times uh, collectively. I know there has to be some thoughts or questions. <laughs> I would say that um, this is the first time that I've ever um, heard the translation of Abba to go beyond like a masculine principle. And so that has shifted um, the nature of that prayer. And of course, the conversation that we expounded on, but um, that has really grounded me in understanding more about what I'm actually doing and what it means to pray. Just wait till every time you go to do anything and uh, you just uh, sit there and then you say, oh, I can't say any words. 
or you know it, it just brings a whole new meaning to like you know they you grow up in around i grew up around old people and you know you know call on the father call on the father but knowing what that word really means it, like i said it just kind of shifts a lot about the relationship the, the, the beautiful part you know, about oh, go ahead go ahead go ahead well, I was just about to say the beautiful part about that is what happens is once the, not only the understanding of, of this is uh, all, but the embracing and the practicing of all of this happens. Um, whenever it, when, when, whenever something comes up, you don't uh, then in a sense call on the father. You might say, oh, my grandmother in this situation would have said call on the father and instead you automatically go to your heart and you go to a, 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 a meditative state and then you automatically ground and then all of a sudden whatever is going on um, or, or what was perceived as to be a, a problem. Uh, for example, let's just say it's a storm uh, or it seemed like a storm, storm and all of a sudden there is immediate uh, calmness and that immediate uh, uh, calmness um, and metaphorically the sun comes out it uh, starts off from the, uh, the, within the inside of yourself and your inside at the same time expands. And then that thing uh, immediately transpires uh, outwardly before you as well. Pastor Richard. No, I, um, I lost my thought. Well, can I say something then? You're in the start. <laughs> sure, well, I'm waiting ahead. on him to find his. I'm okay. waiting. I'm waiting on him to find his thought. Um, it, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Pastor Jay. Oh, I said you might have found my thought. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I always wonder when I would say the prayer why it seemed like it didn't go any further but to the ceiling. And it just felt like it was null and void. And, and like they say earlier, that's what we've been taught. Say the Lord's Prayer, say the Lord's Prayer. But it's like I wasn't doing anything. It, it was just like null and void. So all the things that we said out loud to God or at womb, did it, did it affect anything? Did it take, did we get any results? I don't believe, I don't remember getting results. Maybe it's just me. No, Elvin, it's not just you. Um, most of the time when we pray for stuff, we didn't get results. However, remember, think about the times um, when you deeply, deeply needed to uh, see a different direction in your life or to experience something different or something to change. And it was a deep-seated desire. In other words, we call it getting, being sick and tired of being sick and tired. That's when things change. However, up until that point, we just say in words because we've been told to do that. It's like praying with one eye open, seeing if it's going to happen. <laughs> uh, however, the older uh, we get, we see it differently. And I do believe that that the the when, when um, Virginia spoke of um, her uh, grandparents, they had a sincerity that transcended understanding these words. The trans the trans the transcendence was because they truly, from the depth of their soul, believed that there is an entity, there is a being greater than me that has given me the strength to get to where I am in the face of all of this adversity and all of this trauma that I've had to experience. They deeply believe that. And that's the reason we are in our existence to this day. However, there has come a time when it is imperative to understand the heart of the Creator, 
so that we are able to move humanity as opposed to move in burden, to move humanity to a place of balance as opposed to move in burden after burden after burden. We are in an era that the earth has never experienced before. And the opportunities are here for us to make the changes that will change the course of everything that's in existence and everything that will come into existence. That's the power with which we speak this day. When every one of you with whom I've spoken at some time or another, you've heard me say, just let me do what I do. And I, I've never been able to explain what that means, but I know it works. It, why? Because I trust who I am and who, who I'm one with. Now, what I'm beginning to see is when Jesus was saying this to those disciples, he was not saying words. He was talking about an attitude of trust that puts you in a place where you have never been before, and it allows you to speak the words, and it shall be no different than the Hebraic words, Allah Akabra, um, no, 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 no. Allah Abacadabra, which means I create as I speak. No different than that. Let me do what I do. When I say that, everything that's involved in these words that we are looking at today is taken into account. And I don't have to get on my knees. I don't have to on my face. I don't have to say anything other than let me do what I do. Why? Because my mind is not doing a thing. When those words are spoken, my soul has already done it. Does that make sense to you, Ms. Evans? And everyone? Yes, else? sir. I, yes. Yes. Any other thoughts or questions or comments? Pastor Rich, did you remember what you were about to say? No, I said. Oh, okay. I, I think it was all wrapped up in what I said just now in response to um, Evelyn. Coupled with uh, Regina's uh, statement. Gotcha. Hey, everyone. This is Mary. Um, just want to share that um, um, I always, you know, prayed, and but I prayed with an understanding that there is a Father. And that's what I call them. I'm learning more now. And one of the things, the Lord prayer, like Evelyn, didn't mean too much. So I rarely prayed it except when I was told to pray it. So, But in my own time, I would just have a conversation with the Father and remind him, um, like he needs to be reminded, of course, that they who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. And I'm searching, Father, for I'm hungry. And I'm thirsting after righteousness because I am the righteousness of God created in Christ Jesus. And I want to be all that you have me to be. And I've said that for years and for years and years. I have searched and searched and searched. And because I believe, I know that God has brought me to this place, to this group, who um, is able to show me, uh, uh, um, take me deeper into of the things of God. And when I think about forgiveness, forgiveness for me, because uh, even though uh, it took a while to forgive, 
I still felt the presence of God, but it wasn't in its fullness. It wasn't able to flow fully until total surrender, total total submission to uh, my the people that broke my heart. And it's just several of them that just broke, you know, I'll be there for you and all that stuff. So it took a while. But then when I totally released it and I knew the moment that I had released it, when I was able to talk about one individual and there was no malice, no bitterness. And I, I it, it just happened without me even knowing it. So the p- p- prayer is powerful, and I'm glad to know that there is a deeper um I can I can go deeper in who I am in myself by the Creator and just meet Him or meet her, uh, where where inside of me that I can be all that He would have me to be and to uh, go around doing the work of the Father and helping people. And I'm lost for words again, but I just think about how important it is that we recognize that even though the people are in the church, if they truly if we believe with all our hearts, and search, seek after a more perfect way that we will eventually all get to the point to know that the Creator and the Kingdom of God is within us. Just like Jesus said, He said it, but for some reason, we just thought that was too simple, so we're going to make it difficult so that people will have to come to church Sunday after Sunday and Bible study and and never get it, because I was there with the church door open, and when it closed, I was one of the last ones. So just saying that, you know, it's a lot, y'all. It's really a lot, and we just pray for unity in the world. And I said enough. Thank you for listening. Um, oh, thank you. Um, when, when you were struggling to say uh, him or her, it actually, it is, it is not a sin. You will not burn in, the, in hell for referencing our creator as being an it, because that's exactly how it is referenced uh, in the original language. There are no gender assignments at all. Uh, you said it? Yes, ma'am. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> okay. You think, well, you know, that's not how I was taught, because how dare you? How dare you? It's a trinity. Okay. But I'm also I'll... learning that. Yeah. So it's good. It's male, female, that uh, Sophia and all that. Oh, okay. Got it. Uh, I'm good. Uh... I'm excited because I'm learning so much in such a short length of time. So, uh, I'm just excited about and look at where he's taking. Well, I see where he's taking me. Okay. I'm finished. Thank you. Pastor Richard, you were saying, I'm not sure if you're talking in on mute. No, I was simply saying that uh, I don't want anyone to, yeah, of course you're going to be just uncomfortable about it. I'm, I, honestly, in the interim of my ministry, I would have been the first one to, to tell you that you were burning hell for reference in the Creator as an it. However, what else are you, how else are you going to reference the Creator uh, when it is not female, it is not male? It has no gender assignment whatsoever, so what are you going to call it? What, how, how will you, what, what uh, pronoun will you use to refer to it? So that's all. Agreed. And as always, thank you, Mary. Any other thoughts or questions? If there's uh, nothing else, uh, I'm uh, I'm finished. Uh, but happy uh, to continue if there are any other uh, questions or thoughts or comments. Well, thank you all for uh, joining. Well, before I leave. I'm going to extend the offer uh, again since um, others are joined, um, uh, I guess, after a little after we started. 
were there any other questions that were not related um, uh, to uh, what we um, talked about uh, this uh, past week? Um, today, uh, uh, yesterday or Saturday, as well as any other um, question also. So uh, put that out there again, uh, that, uh, that availability, that option. All right, well, uh, I'm done. Thank you all for uh, joining. Thank you, Sheldon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Sheldon. Good night, Have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening, everybody. Have a good night.